think there's anything that we could give them or bless them with that would um, completely convey our gratitude for you guys. Um, these guys carry so much and I don't think we realize what they carry. When we counsel with them, they don't just leave that in the office back there when they go home. So they carry our burdens along with what's going on in their life. And we know that it gets super stressful sometimes. So we are so very grateful for you guys and we love you. Um, so, yes. So this is for you um, from all of us here at New Life. Welcome to The Rundown. We are so glad that you clicked on this video today. Whether you're watching it from your car or listening on Spotify, whatever day of the week it is, we're glad you're here. And Good morning. Yes. Good morning. So I have Pastor Andrew and Pastor Tim here with me this morning. And we are so glad to serve you. Um, whether you're a part of our body here at New Life or not, if you're not, come and join us. On Sundays at 11. Mm. Um, we're filming this on a Monday morning, so if we reference yesterday, that is why. <laughs> um, so yesterday... Which you can watch yes. on our YouTube channel, New Life for the yeah. City. So if you weren't here Sunday, or you're not here, go check it out. Yeah, so check it. Go to our live, and you can see yesterday's service. So yesterday, we had a really great Sunday. We had a surprise because October is Pastor Appreciation Month, for those of you who do not know. And so we chose to celebrate yesterday, and we got to appreciate both pastors here at this table. Yeah. Um, we're so lucky to have both of them. And we had a really cool surprise for Pastor Tim yesterday. So if you did not see that, please go watch it back. Watch um, it. <laughs> because we did capture that on live stream. So That was a very genuine reaction, too, it really was. by the way. Because I had no clue. I had no clue that that was coming. Yes. Um, some inkling, maybe, pastor appreciation type <laughs> stuff. But not, not, certainly not. Any, anything was amazing, but that was particularly... Amazing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I'm so, a if you, so if you weren't here, we surprised Pastor Tim with six tickets to go and see the Dallas Cowboys play the day before his birthday on November 10th to go and Sick. see the Eagles play um, at AT&T awesome. Stadium. That's and so, awesome. yeah, so he's never been, and so it it left him speechless yesterday. <laughs> I, 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 I'm still speechless. <laughs> It's for, you know, my cold. birthday is November 11th, which is the Monday after that game. And so I'll be 50 years old. Ooh. And so that's a big, un, that's a big, un, it is. that's a big, un. it's a yeah. milestone it's birthday. It's a huge milestone birthday. And for the church to honor us like that is. Is that the second most important birthday? Well, outside you of your six, first one, first one in 16. <laughs> I don't know. First one, 16, I don't know. 50. 16, 21, 21, 50. Oh, 21 I forget about Honestly, 21. <laughs> after 21, you, there's no reason to celebrate birthdays. Yeah. And so, so 50 is a big deal. And, um, and it was, um, it was humbling. It's amazing. And, and, um, Pastor Appreciation Month is weird, <laughs> anyway. It's I bizarre. I know. You know, and and um, it is. And I have a lot of pastor friends online on Facebook, on different Facebook groups, and it and guys share their hearts on this in these groups, and um, and some guys even share like anonymously because they're they're really dealing with stuff in their in their in their church or in their ministry mm -hmm. and to see the stories um usually the the first week in november where the mm -hmm. guys talk about my church didn't do anything mm. my church didn't acknowledge yeah. didn't do anything at all and mm. 
and um, or it was you know very last minute, or it was as an afterthought, you mm-hmm. know, and is um, is really disheartening, and and yeah. um, mm. you know to to you know for the church to um, to think of me and and our family and mm. um, is pretty is pretty special. And I'll never take that for granted, and um, mm. and so. Um, it was pretty amazing, pretty yeah. awesome, yeah. pretty awesome. So. We thought it, we thought it was great, and took um, a lot of thought, <laughs> yeah. and it took a lot of, uh, like willpower from a lot of people who struggle to keep secrets. Yeah, uh. that was tough. Because <laughs> I had no, one. I literally had no clue, and, and coordinating everything so that my you kids didn't were find like, "Man, I've been biting my tongue for two months." <laughs> accidentally not saying anything. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. So, so we captured all that live yesterday. Yeah. But had, ideally, so. though, I want to challenge everyone who's listening. Um, let's not just make it October. Um, yeah, there is a dedicated month to it, but I yeah. think I think you should good. acknowledge and take care of take care of the ones who take care of you all year long. Um, mm. Because mm. I think I think people don't realize. Kind of uh, to reiterate what Brandy said yesterday is I think people just live their lives and they don't realize what all of this kind of entails mm. and and kind of the weight of it all. And so yeah, I mean I think October yes for sure. Um, it's kind of a set aside time, but throughout the year, just just yeah. appreciate your your pastoral staff. Mm. That's very. I, I have a I have a a folder in my desk, and mm. as a pastor, I encourage other pastors to do this, and it's called a word of encouragement folder. <laughs> and when I get a card or I get a letter. Yeah. Or you know that somebody sends to me, gives to me. I put it in that folder, mm. and from time to time, I take that folder out when I'm feeling discouraged. you know discouraged mm. or or mm. you know everyone has stressed and bad days and stuff like that. Yes, and um, and so um, your your pastor will appreciate that, and so. Mm. Um, I don't know who thought of October as Pastor Appreciation Month. Probably some self-serving pastor somewhere thought, hey, we need a month. Or I don't know if it was, you know, Lifeway Bookstore said, hey, we can, we can sell some coffee mugs and pens for, oh, for Pastor hilarious. Appreciation. But, but it's, um, it's, uh, it's, oh, it's very gosh. much appreciated. And, um, and so, um, that was a portion. That was not mm-hmm. the entire Sunday. No. Yeah. Um, uh, mm. But uh, we 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 kept talking about. Well, let me put. Let me back up. So it was part two of our stacking stones series um, that we started a couple weeks ago, and um, we were looking at Abraham and the very first altar that he built. Um, he was Abram. He wasn't Abraham yet, but the very first altar that he built in uh, Genesis chapter twelve, mm. and then it was an altar of, of praise. And so, um, mm. we 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 spent the morning talking about this altar of praise and um, relating that to Hebrews chapter thirteen of um, a sacrifice. Of praise, and so an altar mm. is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of of um, of death, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, putting to death our plans, our wills, our our own agendas, all that. But it's also a place. In that, it's a place of praise. Mm. It's a. It's a. It's the altar was a place of worship. So it was a place. You know, to bring the sacrifice, and a sacrifice is an offering, mm. and an offering has value, and mm. um, because anything worth giving to God is going to be, it's going to be our best. It's going to be mm-hmm. um, what is most valuable to us. True. And so, um, mm. so we talked about um, really praising God, and I, I said this yesterday. Um, the subtitle of the sermon is even when, 
mm. even mm. when, that we would give God praise even when stuff happens and even when it's difficult and even when it's hard, mm. um, even when you're surrounded by using the, the biblical mm-hmm. example of Abram got to the land of Canaan and we always think of Canaan as the promised land. It's full of milk and honey, but it's also full of Canaanites. Right. And the Canaanites <laughs> were going to were going to be a problem. So they right. had to so so Abraham gets all his people to this promised land and he's surrounded by his enemies. So we're talking uh, so um, most of us in 21st century life don't we're not surrounded by you know enemies. Mm-hmm. In the physical, I hope, I hope not. <laughs> hope not. I hope but not. we are surrounded by what what the enemy of your soul, the devil, is throwing at us, and so um, mm. talked about that. And then you know, uh, praising God even before you see the promise mm. fulfilled. Mm. And I think that's really hard. I think it's really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I challenged us to talk about. Our challenge just to think about our praise life. Um, we're really mm-hmm. conscious of our prayer life, our devotional life, mm-hmm. but I don't true. know if we're really conscious about our praise life. Mm. Yeah. And um, mm. and so, what were y'all's thoughts? Um, kind of go back yesterday. Back to the sacrifice of praise. One thing I noted was you had said if it wasn't this was probably paraphrased a bit, but I said, but it's like, if it wasn't easy, it wouldn't be sacrifice. Yeah. And mm. I think, I don't know why my, my, my brain is going this way, but, um, whenever I heard that, I kind of think back to like, when we talk about fasting and those kinds mm-hmm. of things, we always say, don't fast something easy because then it's, you're not sacrificing anything. And so I think it's a similar it's a similar thing. Very much it's, so. It's it's not always going to be easy, and I think even even in the context of, of praise itself, some Sundays are tough, and sometimes praising God is easy. So like when when life is great, praising is easy, and so yeah, is that I guess posing this question is that less sacrificial than praising when it's hard? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I mm. I think it mm. if we're living a you know Paul says that we're um you know I I, I beseech you brethren <laughs> by the mercies of God um to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. mm. I think there are days that are just going to be more sacrificial than others, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, if I I'm, agree. I mean, I don't think we should discount our praise because things are going great. Right. I mean, like, oh, well, that's not, you know. I can't praise God because I'm not struggling. Yeah, I can't, <laughs> you know. I no, it's it's a <laughs> yeah. praising God in all things, in uh-huh. all things. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. always. Yeah. Uh, Paul was in a difficult place when he said that, but yeah. it does encompass <laughs> everything. Um, mm. But it's a reminder of. Um, you know, if I'm living a a, 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 a sacrificial life, um, meaning God's worthy of praise all the time and everything, uh, even more so mm-hmm. mm. when it's hard. I think, um, I don't know if it's fair to say or correct to say that my mm. praise is more valuable <laughs> when times are going <laughs> hard, when times are hard, but, um, might be more meaningful. I, I think so. The, yeah. Yeah. I think it might be more memorable. I think it count. I think it maybe. it's um it's part of you know, it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy mm-hmm. living this life. It's not it's not easy. And um mm. <laughs> but even more when th- when times are hard is our praise um, mm. I think you're right. Meaningful. I don't know if it's more valuable, but it's it's definitely. Um, um, maybe it is. Maybe it is more it valuable. Be. I don't know. You know, because it's like I think from the outside. I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily God's perspective, but 
if if I'm seeing someone who is really going through it and they're still praising the Lord through it, yeah, I think that's uh, it. May not be more valuable. It may be more of like a, a faith builder. That's good. Um, so yeah. like you're seeing people who are really really struggling. You're like, I don't know how you're praising the Lord right now, but it gives more people hope to praise the Lord in what they're that's going good. through by seeing. I agree. I agree with the that. struggle. I agree with that. I think, um, and that's what's so powerful about community mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and being in community with people is yes. that you find out what what's going on in their life, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so that when you do see them, you're seeing them struggle or you know that they're struggling and yet you are able to witness uh, the fruit of their life, um, um, which is really was really impactful for me um, when I read that, that passage in Hebrews, mm. you know, the fruit of your lips is, is praise. Mm. And mm. Um, to be able to praise God while you're going through something difficult is it's, it's fruit. Yeah. It's fruit. Yeah. And um, that's maturity for sure. Yeah. 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 That's maturity. Cause you, in order to get fruit, you have to invest, right? Mm-hmm. You got to plant. You got to give. True. You got to give of yourself. You got to give of something. And um, when you don't always, and you're not going to see, fruit doesn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. So when you're in, you know, the farmer's putting the seed in the ground, mm-hmm. the next day it doesn't sprout up and give and yield what it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so vital. It's so important. Um, and it's so valuable, mm. right? That seed, because of what it's going to produce. Well, how long do you have to raise up the baby before you put them? You know, I mean, before you sacrifice them, how yeah. long do you have to take care of that thing that you're sacrificing? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the you know, but I I mean it it's all it's an investment like it, you said it's an investment and so it, in order for it to yield the fruit there's got to be something that you put into it of that's heart and soul and valuable mm-hmm. does that make sense yeah mm-hmm. and so you know if if we're if it's a sacrifice of praise and that praise is the fruit of my lips then that something mm-hmm. something Im- important took place yeah. yes in the beginning yeah. and so um well, maybe even you can look at those, not easy seasons, but the seasons where like life is kind of good. Those mm-hmm. are your planting seasons. That's good. Yeah. And so, so that, good. And so that you're investing those things, and you're you're putting that really. Hold it's it like in. you're you're praising you're putting that praise into the ground so that it can it can be the fruit. Later I like that when cool. you're needing it. I like that. I think that's really. I think that's we should remember that. So, in the easy seasons. Yeah. Your praise is your is your seed. You're investing in that. You're you're planting that, mm-hmm. and um, for the hard time. So right, that right. Because think about this: if you have if you've lived your life with praise on your lips and praising God, you just that's part of who you are. You've yes. determined he's he's worthy of that. Then the difficult seasons um, shouldn't change that. Because you're already, mm-hmm. that's who I am. That's that's how I value um, Jesus in my life, and He's worthy of praise regardless of what's going on. And if I'm if I've if I've made that a discipline in my life, then when things get difficult, um, I, it doesn't change. It doesn't mm-hmm. change. Um, I'm not saying it's not easy, um, but. Uh, but we've lived a life of of that. Mm-hmm. Again, going back to Romans twelve one lifestyle that I'm present my body as a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. What else? What'd you take away? Uh, I don't know. I I mean, I took away a lot. I, uh, there's a lot of things in a lot of different directions. I did just look this up. Interestingly enough, in the Bible, the word praise is mentioned 7,000 times. In the whole Bible? Wow. In the whole Bible. Wow. Wow. So That's a lot. That's been I mean, that, that just confirms everything we've, mm-hmm. we've yeah. talked about. You know, it's like, that's 
pretty crazy. <laughs> I think it's. I think we we um, especially as Pentecostals, we can easily relegate praise to an event. You know, mm. we relegate it to. It's part of. You know, like last week we talked about, you know, the altar service. Mm-hmm. You know, we praise is the beginning. You know, praise right. is the first 17.5 <laughs> minutes uh, of your worship yeah. service. And so that's where praise happens. And, but you just said it's mentioned 7,000 times in a variety of contexts, in a mm-hmm. variety of different meanings, but it all, you know, really is um, praising God. And if, even when, even, even when, when, good and bad, and if it's if it's part of our lifestyle, there's a man in our church, um, and uh, he, uh, just an incredible, incredible man of God, and God's just done something tremendous in his life, and and um, and every time you talk to him, mm. uh. It's Danny Orr. Yeah. Every time you talk to Danny, every time he said, praise God. Uh-huh. Praise God. Praise God, brother. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Praise God. Or praise you know God. what? Times are tough right now, but you know what? Praise, praise God. God. It's always on his lips. Mm-hmm. Every since mm-hmm. I've you know been around him and yeah. know him and in and, and, and like mm-hmm. casual settings, you know, he's just, you know, out to eat or, or, or uh, in the lobby at church or uh, uh, he helped me move some stuff this weekend. It's Building just, and it's building just, things. it's just, it's just in him. Yeah. Yeah. So it comes out of Overflow. him. Overflow. Yeah. There's also just like this attitude of praise just around, around him. Yes. Mm. So that you can use yes. And that. then, and I think that's, that's not accidental. I think there's a, there's a, uh, recognition of what God has done and who God is. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to be on, it's going to be evident. It's going to be fruit. Mm-hmm that you see in his mm, life. Mm. And it's so encouraging because That's so good. so it really needs to be a lifestyle yeah. of praise. And mm. um like not relegated to an event or a conference or a you know worship service um or your radio station. I think mm-hmm. it's got to be or camp or Yeah, right. it can't be a Advanced. special event, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um it's just <laughs> And I think we just kind of have to shift our mindset on, you know, what is a praise and worship song? Right. Mm. Mm. True. That's just me. It's just me saying That's praise true. God. It's me giving glory to God. It's mm-hmm. me driving down the road and just remembering the goodness of God and saying it out loud. I mean, mm. that's that's a um, um, that's praise, mm-hmm. you know. Mm. And so it's got to be uh, an important part. A main part, a foundational part. Yeah. Um, I was in a bakery the other day and heard someone in line behind. They were waiting on a sandwich or something like that, and he was just. I just randomly hear hear him just like kind of humming the words of gratitude, the song oh, gratitude. Oh yeah, just in the middle of a bakery, and I was. I kind of turned around, kind of glanced behind me to see where I was coming from, and. Ran- Some people probably think that's super random, but I was like, I just thought it was kind of cool. Just randomly praising God in the middle of his small town bakery. Well, Brandon Lake in, in in another podcast talked, it's funny you said that. I literally thought I had a similar thought, but uh, he talked about when they asked him what his favorite song was, it was Gratitude. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, dude, you sung this 50 million uh-huh. times. How does how yeah. has this not drove you absolute bonkers? Right. right. And then he sits in a podcast and says it's his favorite song. I'm thinking, that dude lives it. He does. He lives it. I think if we're not, I mean, what what do you really have? Think about this. If you're a believer, what do you really have to complain about? Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, in reality. Mm. I mean, I mean, think about this. I, regardless of, you may say, well, in the natural, I've got a lot to complain about. You know, okay, maybe. I, I, I mean, yeah. that's valid. Yeah. Um, mm. you know, your, your finances and real relationships or sickness or illness. Mm. I, I get it. It's valid. Mm. Do you, do you have a reason to complain? Sure. I think everyone does, but do you really, when mm. you think of the goodness of God, 
what he's mm-hmm. brought you through. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I go back to, you know, I have food in my refrigerator. I have a roof over my head. Yes. I have a vehicle I drive wherever I need to in. That really puts me in like the top 1% of the richest people on planet <laughs> Earth. Have, however bad it may be. Yeah. Do I have a reason? Do I not have a reason to praise? Let's put it that way. Do you have a reason to complain? Right. Yeah, you have a million reasons to complain. But do but do I not have a reason to praise? The answer is no. I have I have I have I, I and and so I think as believers, um, we mm-hmm. gotta put that in perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, when the complaint I heard a preacher say this one time and I've said it, I've I've stolen it and claimed it as my own. <laughs> but it was and I think it was Bill Johnson from Bethel Church. He said, if, if Jesus inhabits the praises of his people, then who inhabits the complaints? Mm. Mm. That's really good. And it's really good food for thought. It is. Mm. It is. Mm. At, at, a, at, a, at a minimum, mm. there's nothing wow. fruitful or valuable about it. Nothing. Yeah, yeah not a thing. At, at, a, at, a, at, a, yeah. at worst, it could be really detrimental and and a strategy of the enemy Mm -hmm. Mm. that if complaints are what's coming out of our mouth and we know that power of life and death is in our tongue Mm. you know the word tells us what are complaints doing they're they're well they're yeah nothing good at best at worst they're 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 tearing down Mm -hmm. i was gonna say aren't they they literally leading us in the opposite direction wouldn't it of, Complaints of eventually lead Come to on. bitterness and resentment, and that's kind of the and path we're not, that we're takes. not telling you guys not to see reality. Right? No, <laughs> okay. no, no. You're no. human. You're going to complain. No, no, no. I'm not. But. I'm not. No. A a lifestyle of praise versus a lifestyle of complaints isn't a rejection of reality. Yeah. Um. And that, that and faith doesn't do that. Faith faith doesn't reject reality, and that's another thing that I want to I want to de- demystify. Yeah. Faith doesn't, you know, dispute fact. Mm-hmm. Okay, faith allows us to see what's beyond that, mm. and which is God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> faith doesn't dispute the fact. Faith points us to truth. Yes, that's and good. so if I see really the good. truth versus the fact, then I can still praise God. That's how I can praise God despite cancer, and I can praise God despite mm-hmm. Ooh. financial problems. I can right. and I can praise God despite whatever because mm. faith points me to that, and um, um, mm. it doesn't. Again, it doesn't. It doesn't diminish the fact, but it doesn't give the fact any value. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like it can still be factual in your life, but it's like, in spite of the fact, there is yes. still faith. Mm. We, we we talked about this yesterday in the sermon. In Second Kings, it's Elisha and his and his servant Gehazi, mm-hmm. and there's a king that's really angry at Elisha because God's <laughs> given him all the plans <laughs> yeah. that are against yep. this king, and so the king's like, "Well, we got to kill Elisha," <laughs> and he so he sends out a whole army to defeat one guy. And Elisha's there with his oh, with his servant Gehazi, and they've surrounded these guys. And Gehazi, the servants, like they're surrounding us. These horses, and the and the and these military men, and all of this. Mm. And and Elisha says, "But there's more with us than are with, with them." Them. them. Well, that doesn't make sense in the natural. Okay. Ooh. Now you can't dispute the fact. Of that they are surrounded by the army. I mean, that's mm-hmm. it's there. It's I there. mean, you can see it. You can see it. You can't. Dis- you, I mean, you can't dispose of the fact of, of our, our lives and the reality of our lives. They're they're all around us. They're all around us. Yeah. But <laughs> Elisha then prays, "God, would you open his eyes?" Mm. Mm. And mm-hmm. and he was concerned about his spiritual eyes mm. because Elisha right. could see what was there before. It was in the natural. Mm-hmm. He opens it like he, he, he prays that prayer. Gehazi's eyes, eyes are opened, spiritual eyes, physical eyes, and he sees, he sees that it. 
the army that is surrounding them is surrounded by heaven's armies. Mm -hmm. Wow. On the the whole mountain, the word says the mountain is surrounded by by horses and chariots of fire. And it's this beautiful picture of despite, Hmm. you know, some of the name it, claim it, (laughs) blab it, grab it ministries would say don't even speak that don't even say that don't even acknowledge <laughs> the reality mm-hmm. that that somehow challenges faith no it doesn't no, no. that's irresponsible and stupid to just go well no there, there really is a cancer there mm-hmm. yeah you are you are surrounded in a lot you, of ways. You, there really is depression mm-hmm. you there really is anxiety i mean yes. you know we're, we're that, that doesn't accomplish anything to pretend it's not there yes right. but faith says Yes, I see the enemy, but there is a greater power that is surrounding mm-hmm. that enemy in yes. my favor. Yes. Yeah. And yes. that's what faith does. And mm-hmm. I think that 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 um that we can because of that, we are able to praise God in times where other folks other folks sorry, that was our alarm. Other folks are are going to be in complete bewilderment because of that well, because they only see facts bethany before the podcast you said the sight thing talking about the faith yeah i don't know what the statement was um or he said the uh, the opposite of faith is sight oh yeah that was, it's, uh, it's uh, human something sight, you had said right? yesterday <laughs> absolutely um, i think i think you I think it could be both it could be spiritual sight yeah uh, spiritual no, sight too be both. for sure. the lack of spiritual sight well the opposite of faith um, I used to think for a long time was doubt, and then and then I I I was challenged in that. It's like everyone deals with doubt, mm-hmm. you know. There's not that's there's mm. every believer is going to deal with doubt. There's I mean God's big enough to deal with my doubt. Um, mm. um, so that's not the opposite of of, of mm-hmm. faith. That's not the antith- antithesis of of faith. And then I used to think maybe it that's was a fear. starting point. I used to think but, it was it was fear. Yeah, fear is. I'm like, well, no, that's not it either, because fear's fear's normal and natural, and and uh, you know, chemical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, everyone's gonna you're gonna fear something yeah. somehow. Yeah. So the opposite of faith can't be that. Um, the opposite of faith is my sight, right. what I see. Yeah. Mm. Well, because if you could see everything instantaneously as you need it to happen, there is no need for yeah. faith. See, and that's where doubt comes in because you think, well, if I can't see it, then I don't have, then I, then I'm, I, I doubt it's going to happen because it's not there, mm-hmm. you know, or I do see it, the, 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 the enemy or the, the catastrophe looming, and that creates the fear mm-hmm. in me, mm-hmm. you know, and the lack of faith, in the mm-hmm. lack of faith. But mm-hmm. faith is not, so our faith is, is, the opposite of faith is sight. Mm-hmm. So, so true. So if I mm. have the the Elijah kind of faith in Second Kings, where man, I see beyond this yeah. in my spirit, in, in the spirit, um, and know that God's word is true, uh, and every man's a liar, then um, then I can praise mm-hmm. Him in the storm. I've always that story. Mm. Or that passage of scripture has always really impacted me. I don't know why, but that story about Elisha, I remember, I think I remember the first time I really, really read it. Because I've always, you know, you just, you hear stories, sure. Bible stories growing up. And you just kind of always know about some things. And I really took the time to to read it and really understand what that story, what what that was saying yeah. Mm. when I was in college and I remember the moment I did. And then the week that I was kind of really diving into it, Mm. we had had a prayer worship night at Chi Alpha and I get there and it was when that song surrounded first came out Mm -hmm. and it hadn't really been played anywhere. And they start playing that in the middle of our worship night. And I had just been in that passage of scripture and it was, it, I still remember the moment. And it was like, yeah, it's like everything's just like, oh, okay. It all just clicked. But I just think it's, it it's to life. super impactful. Mm. I think that, um, I think that's awesome. I think it's awesome. I think our takeaway is 
is a question. How's your praise life? Mm-hmm. How's your praise life? Well, thank you for joining us on this week's episode of The Rundown. Mm-hmm. Join us next week for a very special guest. Yes. We're not going to tell you. We're going to keep it a secret. Make sure that you tune in. For episode 10. Episode 10. We have made it 10 weeks. Wow. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, all of that. Parting words of wisdom, Pastor Andrew. Love you. All right. <laughs> have a great day. See you next week on The Rundown. <laughs> 